Because, ladies and gentlemen, what have been, we've been talking about when we have an angle, right, or we're given a point, and we cannot use the unit circle. It's not in the unit circle. Um, Destiny, what do we always say that we're going to do? What do we always want to draw? Right. A triangle, right? We always got to make sure we draw, create a triangle. Now, it's going to be very important, though, remember that we still need to fall within our range, right? We add, that's the main important thing about using our inverse functions. So remember, tangent, if we're going to look at tangent, tangent is going to represent our opposite over our adjacent. And we have a negative 3 over 5, which I don't know which side is going to be negative, either my opposite or my adjacent, right? So let's look at a couple different angles that we could have if it would be this way. Well, one, we could have a negative 3, positive 5, or we could have a uh, positive 3, negative 5. Now, Kelly, what do you think, which one would fall within the range of tangent? If you can remember the range of tangent that we had. Which one of those, if I was going to plot them on a standard coordinate grid? Which triangle? This one or this one, would you assume? You could just make a guess. It's okay. The bottom one. Do you have any idea why, or you just want to make a guess? Well, if I'm looking, if I'm graphing this on a coordinate grid, right? What? Oh, that would be right there. I'm saying which one is going to fall within the range of tangent? I'll give you an example. Remember, the tangent, right, is going to be negative pi halves is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to pi halves. Yeah, it is going to be the bottom one. And let's take a look at why this is going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, where's negative pi halves and pi halves? Negative pi halves and pi halves, right? Your triangle has to be between either those first two quadrants. So graphing a triangle over here, that's not going to be within the range. So we can't find the inverse of that. Does that kind of make sense? So that's very, very important when creating your triangle that you create it within the range of your inverse function. So now we have our triangle. Yep, what? Because remember, the tangent is between negative pi halves and pi halves. It's only in the first and fourth quadrant. Do you remember we talked about the ranges? Remember we wrote them down last class period, all the different ranges? The, if um, the tangent can only be, you can only find the inverse between negative pi halves and pi halves. Only between these first two quadrants. Where's pi halves? Here's pi over 2, right? So that's negative pi over 2. So if we were to draw a unit circle, your triangle can only be between these two if you're going to try to find the inverse for tangent. Because the top triangle was over here in the second quadrant, right? It was negative 3 up 5. That's in the second quadrant, which is not in these two quadrants. All right? So now that I have my triangle, which is going to be, what was it, 5 comma negative 3, so now to, find, to figure out the rest of this, I just need to use my uh, Pythagorean theorem, right? So to use Pythagorean theorem, here's going to be my theta, my right triangle. So we have leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. 25 plus 9 equals c squared. c equals the square root of 34. All right? And then to find the secant, remember the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if I have my cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the secant is going to be the hypotenuse over adjacent. So therefore, this final answer is going to be um, square root of 34 over 5. That's all you guys simply need to do is use your arctan to be able to create your triangle, make sure it's in the correct quadrant, and then you can evaluate. Yes? Right. Think about this as. Right. Because remember, we're trying to find the inverse of the tangent. So we have to make sure we create the correct triangle to evaluate for the inverse of tangent. Okay. And it's a composition. Yes, you're doing two different things. You're first doing the inverse of tangent to create your correct triangle, 
and then you're evaluating for secant, which is just taking the ratio of the two sides of your triangle for secant. So everything like the parentheses, you kind of, start with? Yep, you work your and say. And then you go through. Yeah. Gotcha. Any last questions? Good. I just have time right now to go over that last one.